Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in Kaiserreich. It's been months since I've actually played Kaiserreich. I've been waiting for this update forever. So, we're beginning a new campaign, in which, which you can already tell by the thumbnail, um, of, I've already decided to play as Ching China, because, well, I've never played as him in Vanilla, I've never played as him in Kaiserreich, I've never played really as Ching China. And, I will show you custom game rules. No one gets buffs. Foreign policy will remain the same. This will be a pretty vanilla playthrough of me doing Ching China. I've never played as China before, and I want to have a fairly okay experience. I'm going to leave these all default. Maybe except for one. How about this? We will choose one thing here, and... You know what? Let's have Baltic Germans. Integrate. Okay, I lied. Let's have two things here. Um... How about we have... I don't want to talk about South America. Europe is much more interesting than anything else. How about with the Ausgleich of 1937? Let's have some military occupation. Ooh, reform civil war. Success. Eh, let's federate it, because why the heck not? Cool. Let's just get started. I have no idea about the lore behind Qing China. So, welcome to Kaiserreich. Yeah. Um, awesome. Blood on the Yangtze. Yangtze. Uh, cool. I'm sure I will, blah, blah, blah. Now, let's get started with Qing China. I know a few things about this. We start off in a faction with a bunch of other Chinese states, but that's not going to last very long. Secondly, um, we have the League of Eight Provinces, which is going to go kaboom here in just a little bit. I know that much. Uh, I will let you know, I am recording this on the literal day the update came out for Kaiserreich point 10, 0 0.10. Um, League of Eight Provinces is almost capable of assuming faction leadership. I don't care. Oh, I can't train some of these divisions, which is fine. Manchu Imperial Guard. Oh, disgusting. Oh, disgusting. Cavalry. Not bad. Not bad. Experimental Armor Brigade. Not great, but not terrible. Infantry. 18 combat with, with recon and support artillery. Yeah, buddy. Buddy. Yeah, buddy. Um, I don't know how much we can train, but I do know that Qing China... They got almost a hundred million people living here, and I love it. But we do have many different borders with all sorts of different people, but we shall do the Year of the Rat. As the nation prepares for the celebrations of the Chinese New Year on January 24th, Assembly President Cao Kun and Wu Paifu have begun drafting a speech to mark the fourth year of concerted anti-trade debt efforts. The largest issue currently facing the central government, the Zili Clique, hopes to tackle this problem even as whispers of unrest emerge from the League of Eight Provinces. Ah, I love Year of the Rat. Um, let's see, we want to build up more civilian factories. I don't want to build them south. That seems very dangerous. There's several different countries down here. I'll build it in Jingzhou. Jingzhou. However you pronounce that. Um, we got artillery. Ooh, look at that. Hanyang Type 88. Looks kind of cool, not gonna lie. I want more of this. We got... This is actually not too bad. This is actually not too bad starting off. Now, we don't have any tanks we're making, which is kind of a no-no, but... Using tanks right now, light tanks? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I would keep that. But we have ships we can build. Oh, however, with this update, they said they did start streamlining a lot of this stuff currently here to make it more like Vanilla Hoi 4, which I actually kind of like a little bit more because... I'm very used to this now. I'm very, very used to Vanilla Hoi 4 Naval Mechanics with Man the Guns DLC. Um, if we have to make something, though, Veltkrieg Cruiser Hole, this is garbage tier. This is all garbage tier that we start with. Even the subs are garbage tier, actually. They could be a lot worse, though. They could be actually a lot worse. For now, we're not going to really invest too much in our Navy, so this is cheap, it's reliable, it doesn't cost us too much. And before I actually do that, yes, high Jung class. This is not a capital ship, which is good. That's, that's exactly what I want to see. Next up, we need our stockpile is pretty good. Nice. We have 23 divisions under who? Oh, P w Wu Paifu. Um, I don't like how these are old guards and stuff like that. Zhang Baili. Cool. You're a field marshal. <clears throat> And we need a general for the infantry. Liu Menggang. Awesome. We have one tank division with no tanks in production. 
Well, I'm going to separate you for now. I'm going to actually separate the cavalry because I'm not going to get rid of them. They can actually be pretty darn useful, especially in China. Oh, god dang it. There you go. Uh, god, no, 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 no. There you go. Oh, wait. Oh, I have even more, more cavalry. Wait, are these t different templates? Ten combat with, which is... Eh, these must be the Manchu ones with recon. That's not bad. I'll still use them. Oh, 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 I hate militia division so much. I hate them. I'm... I... I can't... Ah! Oh, I can't... Ah! Oh, why? Well, this is gonna be the main army, I guess. Uh... Oh, that's gonna suck. But, no matter what happens. Uh, I'm gonna deploy, like, U8 down here. Oh my god, that's a huge border. Uh, the cavalry next will come, like, right there. And I'll put the ten divisions up north to those Fengqing government people under the Chine the Japanese boot. Um, oh, substance abuser. I love substance abusers. Wink, smile, I don't know. Cool. Oh, he can be an infantry expert. Nice. And before we, you know, let's let time go on for now. Let's let time go on. And you'll be led your cavalry, op cavalry officer, politically connected. I don't like politically connected people. Hmm. I like the artillery officer guy, but uh, I guess I had to choose him. There's no one else. Ah, the Great Qing. The internationally... Oh, hold on. There we go. Uh, med mediated end of the last Zili Fengxin War in 1928 brought an end to nearly four years of chaos and instability and the longest period of peace enjoyed by some parts of China since the Xinhai Rebellion of 1911. Though Wu Paifu and his northern Zili clique accepted the return of Manchu monarchy, Further German concessions were refused, leading to a cooling of relations. Germany continues to maintain support for the Qing government, but mainly with the aim of ensuring consistent competition with the also-supported Southern Zili as part of a larger divide-and-conquer strategy in China as a whole, as well as in the hopes of gradually building a Chinese bulwark against Japan. Sounds like geopolitics to the highest degree. Though the specter of Japanese domination looms across much of northern and eastern China, the country is nonetheless far more divided than most in Beijing would prefer, and Qing finds its authority contested on all sides, quite literally. From the defiant Fengqing government in the northeast, to the various ostensible allies across the remainder of China, nominal components of the empire granted near total autonomy by grace of geography and regionalist sentiment. As a result, Qing enters 1936 largely contained to the North China Plain and at the head of a faltering national order. Long live the Emperor! Oh, and as you will see very soon, they're gonna go kaboom. But we have so many Chinas here. Oh my gosh, more reading. 1936 finds a powerless assembly on the brink. Five groups dominate. President Kerensky is assassinated. Oh, hold on, it's lagging. Oh, it was. Uh, five dominates the body, and although they have no power in the chamber, the groups that support them are not to be trifled with. The most powerful of these is a Harmony Association, nominally led by President Kao Kun, a depressed alcoholic. True power in the group resides with Wu Paifu, who founded the association as a legitimizing movement to ensure Zili representation in the assembly. While nominally an independent political party, the Harmony Association's deputies are all former Zili officers. Following Kao Kun's legally dubious re-election, few believe the group is anything more than a front for Wu to control the country. Who is he? Huey Long? The Prosperity League occupies a similar position, and while it claims to be a political party, few see it as any more than a lobbying group for German interests in Beijing. This leaves three parties in the opposition. The Manchu Party, comprised of Qing princes and former or former uh, royal hanger-ons. The Young China Party, a clique of young officers at the Baoding Academy, styling themselves after the Young Turk Party. And the New Chinese Emperor Reformation Association, a fusion of two reform groups that, while loyal to the emperor, favor a structural reorganization of China back to the traditional model of the rural village. And the end two warlord cliques. While these three groups are in opposition to Wu, he allows them seats in the powerless assembly as a way to legitimize his unpopular regime. Interesting. Ah, he's on. He, this guy's even on Time Magazine. He's got to be good. He's got to be famous. Everyone who's been on Time Magazine must be famous, important, and uh, never forgotten about. Observer writes on the Legation Council. The Legation cities were formed in 1928 after the Jade Wind Incident, when a European passenger train was attacked by Kuomong Tang bandits. While mostly designed to halt the Zili Fengqing conflict, 
that was destabilizing the Far East, the Americans also intended it to serve as a tool of their open door policy, allowing access to Chinese markets all, to all Western nations and Japan. Pursuant to these imperialist aims, the Beijing government has been cut out of all decision processes on the Legation Council, despite nominally leasing their territory from us. We have observer status on the council and are able to get a view into the decisions being taken in their meetings, but beyond that, our interactions with the body are limited at the governmental level. I've been granted the rank of master, but I'm... or What's going on? Like, I, I can see what's going on, but I can't make a decision? What? We deserve a vote in Shanghai. I am allowed on the council, but not given the rank of master? I mean, what the heck is going on here? Restructuring our debt for the last few years, Wu and Cao have, been, have spent most of their political capital attempting to restructure and reduce the enormous debt of the Qing Empire. While theoretically possible, this plan has run into numerous challenges, the chief being a lack of support from the provincial governors. Rumors of instability in the south have further complicated these plans, and Cao Kun is expected to deliver a speech on reducing the national debt to the assembly after the New Year celebrations later this month. And of course, we shall wait this speech. Ah, oh, just... Why? 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 Ah, you're the rat. In a long, somewhat rambling speech to mark the Chinese New Year Assembly, President Cao Kun addressed the need to restore the glory of the Qing Empire, unite the country, and repay the debt burdening the economy. He outlaid a three-point plan. Government subsidies and tax cuts would be given to light manufacturing industries, which doesn't make any sense. How are you going to pay for those subsidies without with tax cuts? Anyways, farmers would be granted tax cuts to grow edible plants instead of cash crops. So they make less money probably in the, in the long run, and an increased tax on provincial governors. Great! Met with polite applause. Next up, we have the sale of the Zagan Railroad. The past few weeks have seen a great deal of economic activity in the League of Eight Provinces, the southern conglomerate of provinces ruled by our nominal subordinate, Sun Chuangfeng. Even more heavily influenced by German economic support than we are, the League just finished construction on a major railroad, the Zagan Line. Zeghan Line. Though funded by the Germans, it was largely built by Chinese labor, leading many to hope for a more equitable relationship with, between German and Chinese in the League, at least in, you know, economic affairs. A few days ago, in a surprising move, the AOG, <gasps> the AOG publicly announced its plan to purchase and consolidate a number of eastern railways on behalf of their subsidiary group, the Shangtong Eisenbahn Gesellschaft, including this new Zeghan route. This move angered many native Chinese residents of the League who saw the Zagon Line as a potential building block in an equal relationship between Europeans and Asians. Widespread protests have broken out, inflamed by conspiracies of fraud and embezzlement on the part of Sun's cronies. We need to keep an eye on this. Oh my goodness. Ah, let's get some encouraging export farming. We do not have the industrial base required to enact large-scale industrial reforms. What we do not lack, however, is a large number of peasant farmers. By carefully granting out subsidies to farmers, we can start to nurture a food export system that can alleviate our tr trade deficit. Glorious. And I do want to say we have an army reform, that we need more army reforms and stuff like that, so... Our attack and defense are pretty garbage. So, you're going to be pretty much on continuous training. And continuous training, and... Well, I'm not going to continually train these guys, I don't want to ruin those tanks. So, right now we have 0.036 political power a day. German mining companies increase their operations in eastern Shanghai, Shanxi. The Shanxi region has always been a good source of coal and useful metals for the empire. Following the fourth Zili Fengxing War, we gained direct control of eastern Shanxi, a slim area of land that used to belong to Yang Zishan's Shanxi clique. Oh my goodness. Our ownership of eastern Shanxi has been the cause of tensions between us and the Shanxi clique, but for now they are unable to compete with our military strength. We have a totalist charter as well, but more importantly, much like the rest of Shanxi, this area is rich with coal and iron. Multiple German companies took an interest in eastern Shanxi and so purchased the coal and iron mines there. These mines sit very close to the border with the Shanxi clique, but this has not been yet a problem. However, news just came in that these eastern Shanxi companies are going to, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, so much reading have shown some of their mines falling into Shanxi controlled territory. We personally do not need to worry about this, but it is likely to cause some problems in the Shanxi clique, with many peasants feeling robbed that these German companies are taking their mines. Widespread attacks on foreigners. 
Following the unrest surrounding the Zagon Railroad, a number of German investors and businessmen have been savagely attacked by rabid anti-foreign mobs. To make matters worse, widespread boycotts of German goods have begun in the south, and this morning, reports reached Beijing of bombings of rail railway stations in Hangzhou and other cities on the Central China Railway. Transportation is grinded to a halt. We have encourage export farming in many regions of the league and the KMT guerrillas have used this opportunity to stage increasingly daring attacks on isolated league garrisons. The German ambassador is demanding accountability and while the league is largely autonomous from our control we still need to do something. Zhang Bali and other Zili officials have long pushed to exert greater control over the league and are urging Wu to use this crisis to leverage greater control over the south. Wu is personally uncertain of this but is currently drafting a telegram to demand accountability from Sun and offer our help should he need it. Unsaid, of course, is the demand for increased control over league affairs should he accept our help. And what does he have to say? I don't know. Right now, though, we need new taxes. Tax collection in the warlord era ranged from semi-organized to completely ad hoc. Even though most people will resent new taxes, enacting them through an established legislative body will hopefully mitigate some of the unpopularity, as a tax man is better than a horde of rapacious soldiers. And we lose stability. Of course we do. And the woo-hoo incident. Troubling information reached... Luo Yang and Beijing this morning. While reports are somewhat contradictory, it appears that there was some sort of massacre of peaceful protesters by the League and German troops in the city of Wuhu. Some claim German troops simply mowed down the protesters, while others claim that a group of KMT radicals attacked the Germans and the League troops first. Whatever the cause, the city has fallen into anarchy. Uh oh, that's not good. And protests have sprung up all over the League. Ironically, at the same time as we received this information on Qing breaks free, uh, we received a report from the Sun claiming that he has the situation under control. Obviously not. Some Zili generals are pushing for a major intervention in the South should the situation deteriorate further, but Wu has yet to take a clear position on the issue. Further exasperating our problems, an informant we have placed within the... Oh my god. Are planning giving a scathing speech later at the assembly today. HA officials, or Harmony Association's officials, are attempting to rouse Kao Kun from a drunken stupor and write a counter speech, but we've been caught off guard. We lose political power. An Qing breaks free. The province of An Qing, long chafing under Sun's rule, essentially declared independence from the League this week. In a widely distributed pamphlet, Governor Chen Chao Yan claimed that the Wuhu incident shows that the Sun cannot manage this crisis and essentially abrogates him from any responsibility in An Qing. Some Zili generals have unilaterally begun to mobilize their troops against KMT incursions. The Wu rightfully suspects their true intentions is territorial expansion. Seeking to undercut their opportunity to, to invade, he declared a national sense of readiness this morning to all Zili and Manchu generals, urging them to ready their troops for any possible armed conflict. Conf confused, Zili troops have largely fallen into line with Wu, and any premature attack south was effectively ended before it began. We got more war support. And finally, for now, Zhang Zongcheng severs ties with Beijing. The position of Shandong Governor Zhang Zongcheng, my god, has always been tenuous at best. An erratic, violent man, Zhang previously held close ties to Zhang Zuolin of the Fengxin government, though he had been kept loyal to Beijing through bribery and lavish commissions. It appears he has used the chaos enveloping the South, however, to cast us, cast us aside. This morning, a, numer a number of our tax collectors were halted at the provincial border, and spies within the province report he has carried out mass purges of Qing loyalists. Even worse, they report him making contact with, oh my god, with Zhang Zulin and the Japanese. Damn you, dog meat general. And now before I read this, I gotta get, take a quick drink of water. Ugh. Very good. To the eminent President Kao Kun and Imperial Minister Wu Paifu, I, Governor Cheng Chao Yun, so humbly ask for funding of my troops, as outlined in the Constitution of our great nation. It is my responsibility, god dang it, of the national government to provide funds to provincial governors to suppress unrest with the situation of Marshal's son unclear. I have taken to the responsibility of protecting the province of An Qing against bandits and leftist agitators. A telegram was delivered to Wu Paifu. This morning from Governor of An Qing, Chen Chao Yun. While the tone of the letter was very bold, it appears Chen has restored order to the province. Wu is faced with choice. Chen would be a powerful ally, but he has a firm anti-concession stance. Supporting him in the long term would alienate alienate Germany, whose support will be essential in the inevitable war against Japan. At the same time, taking a stance against Germany would undoubtedly endear Wu with the population. Oh my goodness, this sounds like a very, very long-term decision. Um, stability? No funds for rebels. Death of the Wang Chang Bin. Earlier this morning, Wang Chang Bin, a senior, senior member of the Zili clique and major ally of Kun, passed away due to his old age. While his death in and of itself is a blow to our command structure, it reveals a worrying trend. Many senior Zili military officials are of old age, poor health, or both, and the corruption 
endemic and our military prevents younger officers from advancing through the ranks. Unless a serious effort is made, our high command will soon consist solely of doddering, senile, old men terrified of adapting new technologies and doctrines. Oh, god dang it. Alright, so before we make a decision here... Um, god dang. So this is Chen Tiao Yuan. We could... New elections intervened in the favor... Placate the assembly, Nanjing. Um, I could default on the debt, which would make us nationalize German stuff. Um, stability, harmonious balance. Request German bailouts. That, oh my goodness. Market liberalism. Why would we want to become market liberals? University ex oh that, that's not a bad idea to become a market liberal university exchange program, but how do I get with un deal with unrest? I need to intervene in the league collapse. You know what? Screw it. Let's send the gold. We need stability on the borders. I have no idea what I've just done, but we'll see what happens. The fifth Anglo-Afghani war. Who cares about Afghanistan? And refugees flee league chaos. With widespread unrest sweeping the League of Eight Provinces, Governors Jin Yuns of Henan and Zhao Yaonan have reported increasing numbers of refugees flooding into the provinces. Although it started as a trickle over the course of the last few days, the flow dramatically increased, with whole families fleeing, fleeing, fleeing an explosion of violence and banditry. The governors have sent worrying telegrams after some of their men interviewed some of the refugees, indicating central authority within the League has collapsed far more than previously thought. Furthermore, they have requested additional food and supplies to deal with the refugees. Who cares? Screw it, send the supplies. Help them out. We need peace. Uh, oh. Chen Tian affirms our leadership. The governor formally reaffirmed Pu Yi's leadership of China. There's Black Monday, mein Gott. Um... In a radio speech broadcast across his territories, while he admittedly initially he found the idea of an emperor anachronistic, he followed that up by enthusiastically endorsing our new anti-concession stance and Pu Yi's devotion to the cause. He concluded his speech with admiration or administration for the Zili leadership. An apolitical figurehead can be useful in a modern state, and with Wu Pai Fu and Cao Kun at the helm of our great nation, we can drive out the foreign scum who have polluted our country and restored to greatness. Make China or make Qing great again. The speech was well received by intellectuals in Beijing and other urban areas, and as some have begun to desert the NCERA and the YCP for the Harmony Association, bolstering our popularity and legitimacy among the general population. Oh look, I got negative political power. A letter of thanks from Chen. Governor Chen has written his sincere thanks to Marshal Wu Paifu, complimenting his ministry and their dedication to Chinese solidarity. Governor Chen promises that his defense of Chinese sovereignty signals the end of Western interference in the Yellow River Valley, and lavishly affirmed Wu Paifu's belief in Chinese superiority over the electoral gridlock in France and over the AOG forces they face. He is most welcome. Ah, uh, the AOG, the Ost... Oh, is it? Allgemein Ostasian Gesellschaft, you are now but a memory. And a shell of your former self, really. And finally, we got new taxes. Now, let us do emergency meeting of senior Zili members. The unrest in the blank has exploded into full-blown chaos. Rioting and looting are widespread, and civil authority has broken down. Wu Paifu must call a meeting of the senior Zili generals and bureaucrats in order to properly respond to this developing situation. Within the month... The Austrian Empire withdraws from Italy, and China is exploding. I love Kaiser Reich. Austrian Empire. What are you up to, Kaiser Karl? Oh my god. Now this is where we get the title of the update from. Despite their best efforts to deal with the influx of refugees, the governors of our southern provinces are overwhelmed. Following a province-wide declaration of martial law made in Huai... Hubei, Governor Zhao Yao Nan ordered his troops to shut down all bridges and roads leading into the province from League territory and denying entry to all refugees. A large number of them, however, began a, to mass at a bridge over the Yangtze River demanding entry. While this started peacefully, it quickly escalated into a full-scale riot as refugees began to pelt Zhao troops with rocks, bottles, and other debris. Eventually, a group of men who had somehow armed themselves with stolen weapons began shooting at Zhao's troops, who responded by opening fire with machine guns. Those not hit by the storm of bullets fled, stampeding other refugees and leaving their friends and family dead or dying on the bridge. This grisly scene is being repeated up and down our border with the League as mobs of refugees have started to force their way into our territory. <laughs> Just unfortunate news, you know, that's all. Oh my god, Wu's nightmare. For the past few weeks, Wu Paifu's dreams have been terrifying. Tonight, he sees Beijing burning, the ghost of Sun Yat-sen uh, stepping from a collapsing forbidden city 
and approaching a frozen Wu. Just as he reaches his hand out to touch him, he is awoken by an alarmed official. Apologies for waking you, sir, or commissioner, but this is urgent. He hands Wu a telegram before scuttling away. Blinking back sleep, or back to sleep, Wu opens the telegram. Reading the characters, his hand starts shaking. His worst nightmares have become a reality. Sun shot yesterday, PM, stop. Perpetrator unclear, stop. And coma, stop. Unlikely to wake, stop. Rights, widespread, stop. Fleeing with gold and documents, stop. Sounds like they're using a telegram. Oh, wait, they are. Duh. Two hours later, Luo Yang is a frenzied hub of activity. Documents concerning Sun's more salacious dealings with Beijing burn in furnaces while a group of senior Zili officials confer with one another. In an unprecedented move, Wu has invited several Manchu nobles, notably Pu Yi, to be present for the drafting of some, of, of some form of unified statement in response to... The assassination. God help us all. Imperial Navy flees north, lacking any suitable ports in the north. The Imperial fleet has been based out of Nantong since the end of the 1927 conflict. With rioting, civil unrest, and general chaos enveloping the city, Admiral Wu Renil, Renli has ordered the fleet to leave the city and head north for the small ports we control outside of T Tianjin. The fall of Nanjing docks also means we have lost what some, li some limited naval manufacturing capabilities we had. Oh my goodness. And emergency meeting of the Zili. Following the collapse of the league to the south, we have gathered nearly all senior Zili aligned military officers and Luo Yang. As the meeting starts, Marshal Wu Pai Fu opens with a short statement Fellow soldiers, the time has come. With the collapse of the league, we are, for the first time since the Zaifeng War, in a precarious situation. Every choice we make over the next few weeks will determine the outcome of China for decades to come. Yeah, I would like to remind some, he says, glancing at the more hawkish members of the assembly, that intervention is not necessarily the most sound course of action. We need to weigh our options first before committing. The various generals nodded in agreement and began a series of discussions on the best course of action. More political power, thank you very much. Marshal Chi's offer. Following our acceptance of Governor Chen's request for aid, a message has arrived from the new Marshal of the League of Eight Provinces, Chi Zhe Yuan. To the most auspicious Marshal, uh, Chi... Ji Yuan, request your aid in suppressing the rebellion in Anqing. As you may, as you are my liege and commander, it is only proper that you assist me in my time of need. Unfortunately for Marshal Chi, our commitment to Governor Chen forces us to refuse this request. And the next thing for me to read, Ripples of Black Monday. While in the weeks following Black Monday, it appeared that we had escaped the worst of the damage. Over the last few days, German-affiliated businesses have been hit with supply chain issues and increased prices. While the economic disruption is nowhere near the scale experienced in Europe and the Americas, it is still a blow to our economy, which... I'm just going to let that sit right there. There you go. That's very nice. Uh, illusion of Qing hegemony shatters. Well, things are broken. Oh. Well. And here we go. Uprising in Fujian. While most of China and the world assumed that the Kuomintang Tang were destroyed in 1927, League Marshal Sun had been fighting a low-intensity guerrilla conflict with remnants of the KMT since the end of the Northern Expedition in the Fujian area. Reports were censored from the press, and even Wu Paifu remained largely unaware of the true scope of the conflict, with Sun keeping all details tightly under wraps. With the current chaos in the League, however, the remnants of the KMT have re-emerged and declared a new campaign of national reuni reunification. They have declared our rightful government... Illegitimate, calling us little more than a German puppet slaving to the whims of Berlin. We can only hope that the remnants of Sun's forces can put down these traitors, despicable traitors. Uh, this was not looking good. Oh, goodness. I hate rebels in the moment of truth. Skirmishes between Chen Chao Yun's forces and forces still loyal to the League have escalated into open battles. Now it comes to time to honor our commitment to the Governor Chen and launch our intervention in support of his regime. We get more war support, max volunteer force, um... Resignation from the Legation City Council. Alright then. Oh, I can do new elections. We have intervened. And we have not intervened in the League's collapse. Oh, well, crap. I can't do the Manchu Restoration. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I want to take a quick look here before I move on. Eh, just click on that. It doesn't matter. The future of the Zili clique. I can eventually do all of this stuff for the most part. I can't do anything on the right, which is fine. Which is totally fine with me. It'd be cool to go down that path, but whatever. Still want to do all this stuff. Loyalty has its rewards. We can't do that. We're going to be on our own for the most part. So, new elections. Previous elections have seen the Harmony Association win by a razor-thin margin. With our recent anti-concession turn, however, we can exploit our new founded popularity to bolster the legitimacy of our regime. That is very, very correct. Um, if anything, do these horses have artillery? No, they don't. God dang it. 
Uh, can I send you divisions? Send volunteers. These guys might die on the way over there. Go ahead and stop doing that. Popular support for, for Waipu... For Wu Paifu, following Marshal Wu's decision to attack the Nanjing government, he ordered President Kao Kun to make a public statement regarding the plan, broadcast from a balcony in the Forbidden City to a large crowd gathered below. It was also transmitted over the radio, a first in China. Citizens, for a century we have suffered under foreign oppression. For too long we have been lapdogs to the whims of the British, Germans, and Americans, but no more. Today we stand independent. The armies of the Sons of Heaven march south to destroy the traitor Marshal Qi and his German lackeys. We will no longer be subservient to the whims of Berlin. We cast off the shackles of the century of humiliation and say this to the world. China is free once again. The speech is met with resounding applause and cheers, and soon sections of it are transcribed to pamphlets and passed around China. Nice! Actually, we actually have some good political power. Holy cow. Oh, I can catch my breath, too. Um, I don't mind setting you three up. There you go. I'm going to send you three to help out, I guess. If I can send volunteers, I will gladly do that. Good, good, good. Um, and they will gladly accept. Good. Awesome. Oh, do I have, do I have planes? Oh, I do have a few planes. Nice. This actually doesn't isn't too bad. Recognition from the Legation Council with a new anti-concession stance. We formally resign from the per perfidious Legation Council. No more will we answer to the foreign scum who will exploit our country for their own financial gain. I quit. And you should quit too. But not quit this channel because this channel is going to keep going. Um. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. So we can send up to 30 planes. Let's send up to 15 fighters. That's not bad. And then 15 tactical bombers. We'll see what happens if I do this. Cool. You. You. Anhui declared war. Oh, it might be too late before I can actually send these guys over. Marshal Wu Paifu backs on Ching. Oh, wait. Did I, oh, crap. Did I send him to the right place? Oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, boy. Southern governors cut contact. With violence in the league escalating daily, the governors of Yunnan, Tang, Ji Yao, and Guangxi, Chen Jai, have stopped responding to official government requests for entry information and updates on what is happening in their territory. They have long despised their government, and while this move is not unexpected, it represents a complete change in their official demeanor to our government. Many in Wu's inner circle fear that this heralds a complete collapse of our authority, and this morning news of a Shanzi confirms these worries. Yeah. Yan Jin San, governor of Shanzi, has formally denounced the actions of our government in what was now being termed the Yangtze incident earlier this week. When Governor Wu Hong Huai Qing's forces fired upon a mob of refugees and proclaimed that the Qing no longer had the capacity to rule China. He stopped just short of recognizing the Fengqing government, but it's clear that the national order is breaking down and Long, Liang Guang breaks free. A coalition of two former eight provinces of the Epitomous League seceded from both the agglomeration and our regime as a whole this morning. Under the command of scholar bureaucrat Chen Zhong Ming, Backed up by the warlord Ma Ji, the province declared our government wholly illegitimate and promised a swift end to autocratic and anachronistic monarchy, rebel scum, and the Peking Commission withdraws from Beijing. Immediately following the president's cowl's incendiary speech, plumes of smoke began to emerge from the streets outside the German embassy and the offices of the Peking Commission. A vast mob had formed outside the gates, chanting anti-concession slogans and burning German-made clothes, furnitures, and even a hastily constructed effigy of the Kaiser. Wow. Police and Zili Aligned military units quickly arrived to prevent the scene from turning ugly, but by nightfall, most German officials and their Chinese hangers on had fled to Jianjin. Um, on our own military tree path. Um, I sent, these, sent this to the wrong group. But something tells me we'll be okay. We'll be okay, since Nanjing probably isn't going to last too long. So, Hunan secedes from the League. Hunan province had fallen under the way of Sun Chuangfang during the chaos following the 1927 Northern Expedition, with the governor... Zhao Hengti reassuming control of the province after a brief period of KMT rule. A longtime ally of Wu, Zhao has been governor of the region since 1920. However, he has also ties to the Federalist government in Guangxi, tacitly supporting the Federalist or Federal model. As of now, he has taken a strictly neutral stance torn between his personal friendship to Wu and his political loyalties to Chen Zhongming. His neutrality, however, cannot last long, as already clouds are beginning to circle around the rule of the province. Hopefully, Wu's old friend remains loyal. Not aggression back with Hu Nan, who hopefully has Hu Nan chicken. Okay, so I set these guys, and um, 
Well, I sent them to the wrong group. I think they're dead. Oh, I can't do... Can you have a... Can I have a general, please? Oh, no. Oh, no, they disappeared. God dang it. Whatever. That didn't make any sense, but whatever. Whatever. You ships, come on back up here. That'd be great. Well, we've had one heck of an interesting beginning episode and a ton of reading. Civil war in Sichuan. Sichuan province overpopulated and has had food shortages has erupted into civil war. Ever since the 1927 restoration, Yang Sen, a close personal friend and ally of Wu Paifu, has ruled the province, but in the last few years, his control began to slip. Various other factions loyal to the Fengjinga regime, Kuomong Tang remnants, and isolationists loyal only to themselves began to consolidate power and use the collapse of the League as the perfect moment to launch attacks on Yang's now shaky government. Yang has yet to reach out to us for direct aid, preferring to hide the scope of the unrest, but Wu expects his old friend to come knocking for help any day. Terrible news. And for our main naval fleet, that looks terrible. Positioning. Come on, rest at home. You'll be fine. Uh, is anyone else still at war? So, on Ching, I accident. Ooh. They have. Ooh. Restoration of democracy. Um. Does anyone like me? Did I just piss off everybody? Uh, everyone hates me. Everyone hates me. So, this is the last thing we'll read before I end the episode here. So, Yang Sen requests support. Dire news coming in from Chengdu. The tenuous peace in the region fell apart. Not long after the troubles in the League of Eight Provinces reached a boiling point, greatly diminishing the influence of the Sichuanese leader Yang Sen. The internal divisions and the clique have reached into open conflict as the Chongqing warlord Liu Zhang, leader of the Industrial Corps with its massive force of manpower and firepower alike, has begun to march on Yang's forces. For now, at least Yang's allies in the Baoding department under Deng Zihu remain, but even that is an uncertainty as the situation spirals further out of control with every passing day. With the current chaos in Sichuan, it can't be ruled out that a prolonged conflict where both sides exhaust their strength could lead to the remnants of the KMTs under Lu Chao seizing the moment to reverse their old misfortunes. As if that wasn't enough, though, persistent draws have had hit hard Sichuan's already struggling people. With disaster looming, our old friend Yang has reached out to us, pleading that we offer any support we may muster. While the consequences of a defeated Yang could prove severe for us in the future, we also have our own crises in the light of the situation in Nanjing. So then what we can send spare, we can't spare anything right now. Oh my goodness. What do I do? I have no idea what I'm doing. Wait a second. What is that? Oh, cooperation. Okay. Alright. Black Monday. Yeah, I don't like that. But we're doing new elections and dealing with unrest. Ooh. A new constitution. There could be a coup attempt. You know what? Help him out. Help him out just a little bit. And I am done reading for this episode. But you know what, guys? I'm sorry. I read a whole bunch. I'm just reading all the lore. That's what I normally do. But, uh, yeah. We're playing as Ching China, and I might have made a mistake already. I might not have. I don't know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Like I said, if you did, leave a like. If you're new here, eh, maybe consider subscribing. Check out my Discord link below, and I will see you all tomorrow as we will continue to see how China explodes and just kills itself again and again and again. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.